As she said, my name is Michael Sudfin, and I'm running for Blacksburg Town Council because I want to bring new ideas and some positive energy and a fresh perspective um, to the community I've called home for the past seven years. I've been interested in politics for a really long time. My mother was a healthcare activist in the 90s. She actually drafted the Patients' Bill of Rights of Virginia. And so when I was a teenager, I was going to town hall meetings. I was seeing her testify before the Virginia Senate and those sorts of things. So I've been interested in politics for a very long time. I came to Blacksburg, which is my father's hometown, in 2002. Um, as a Virginia Tech student, I started off in the computer science department, but like a lot of computer science majors, that didn't work out. <laughs> and I s quickly switched to communication, where I studied journalism. Um, as a journalism student, I didn't just get interested in news in the classroom, but I also did it in the newsroom. I started off as a staff writer for the Collegiate Times and worked my way up to news editor and then city editor for the paper, where I covered a whole lot of topics, including local government, politics, and business. Um, I was also involved in several other areas. Um, I was the president of the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Alliance, or the LGBTA at Virginia Tech, which has close ties with this organization. Um, and while I was president, I started a campaign which led university administrators to create the Safe Watch program, which is a way for students, faculty, and staff to report campus climate types of issues so that the university will respond to it. Before Safe Watch, if a student, for instance, was harassed in his, we'll say his, um, residence hall, that would just go to the RA and the university administration would have no idea what was going on. <coughs> After Safe Watch, there's a central way of reporting these types of issues. There's an anonymous way of doing it also. So what we really did in that project was find, um, we took a community problem and found a workable solution that worked for everyone. And that's some of the types of things I'll be doing um, if I'm elected to the Blacksburg Town Council. Um, uh, I graduated in 2006 and I accepted a job. I was actually offered two jobs after I graduated. One was as a breaking news reporter for the Northern Virginia Daily and the other was a writer uh, at Virginia Tech. And I accepted the latter, one, because I have family connections in the area. I really love Virginia Tech and I've got a major social support system here. But the other was because the Northern Virginia Daily job, even though it sounds really exciting, was only going to offer me $24,000 a year. So as you can imagine, uh, that didn't work out. Um, and so right now, as I said, I work for the Virginia Tech's College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. I write a lot of articles that um, have a lot to do with a lot of different things, whether it's human nutrition, plant pathology, or dairy science. Um, if you go on the Virginia Tech website, you'll often see all sorts of random articles about fire ants or just last week about the release of the potato genome. So I write, write about a whole diverse set of topics. Um, I've also stayed active after I've graduated. Um, as Sarah explained, I'm taking classes in the Department of English, but I'm not a full-time student in the way that some of the other candidates like Bryce and Krisha are. Um, I'm just taking classes part-time. Um, I'm also the vice president of the New River Valley Young Democrats, which is very much like this group, but it's mainly geared towards young professionals who are living in the five counties that include the New River Valley. Um, I'm running on four particular issues for Blacksburg Town Council, and they're on the handbill there. The first is revitalizing our downtown, and that term means a lot of different things to different people. Um, but I really take a holistic approach to our downtown that doesn't just include um, recruiting and retaining shops and restaurants in our downtown area, but works to create a marketing plan that will show that downtown really has a broad appeal to students, locals, um, and visitors in Blacksburg. I also think that we need to create incentives, which um, Susan can talk about, um, to bring more businesses uh, to Blacksburg. I also think, as I explained on there, that the Blacksburg Middle School property offers an opportunity not just for things like community spaces and protecting our open spaces, um, but for some mixed-use development as well that could improve our downtown area. The second issue I'm running on is I really think that we need to pay attention to things like environmental issues, public health, um, uh, how we grow and develop, and how I call it, I describe this as being smart growth. And that term also means a lot of different things to different people. And I've actually written a guest column for the Collegiate Times, which you can probably read in tomorrow's paper if they've accepted it for publication. 
um, which details my plans about what I think smart growth is. And I have some of those on my handbill as well. I think that smart growth preserves the character and the property values of our neighborhoods. It pays attention to environmental issues like stormwater runoff. Um, and it, it just does a lot of things that um, don't take the, the old approach that we need to rely solely on automobile use and um, those sorts of things and that grow further and further out from our town center instead that we grow where we have the services that we need um, and that's how we approach uh, life in Blacksburg. The third issue is public and alternative transportation and that includes it, making sure that Blacksburg remains a pedestrian, bike, and transit friendly community. I think that two specific things that we need to do is to create a fully connected bike path in our downtown area and the other is to create a hop-on, hop-off trolley system, or not system, a trolley between our commercial centers in Blacksburg. So that's <coughs> first in Maine, the downtown area, and University City Boulevard so that people can easily get between these things. It'll, it'll be good for business and it'll be good for making Blacksburg more accessible. And the fourth issue that I'm running on is what I call citizen engagement. And that's getting more people involved in the decision-making process in Blacksburg, including students, young professionals, and small business owners. Um, I think that Bryce's idea to create a student advisory committee also is a wonderful idea. I think that we can also do other ways to actively recruit students in uh, town council appointed boards and committees, and in particular, reaching out to individual student groups like this organization may be the Environmental <coughs> Coalition, or groups that have a vested interest in issues that affect our town that we can reach out to them and make sure that they're represented in our town in its various committees and those sorts of things. Um, so those are some of the issues that I'm running on. I really view my entry into local politics as a continuation of my lifelong work to serve my neighbors, whether they're in the New River Valley or elsewhere. I've been involved in a variety of community service types of things, whether it's uh, the big event or Relay for Life here, or I went in 2000 to, 2007 rather uh, to the Dominican Republic to help with an orphanage for Haitian uh, children and teenagers. So um, on November 3rd, you decide whether I get to continue serving Blacksburg in this capacity on the Blacksburg Town Council, and I would really appreciate your vote and your support. So. Questions? So, State Watch uh, is a wonderful uh, idea and program. I, I appreciate your uh, contributions to it that's being created. Um, yeah. Recently, we've heard about that there's a uh, hotline that townies can call to complain about students. Um, are, would you consider, uh, if you were elected to town, town council, um, creating some sort of way for students to be able to have, not, not complain about towns, <laughs> but to be able to of a, a way to report issues that they see that you know be visible to town council that would mm -hmm. be that, so that action could be taken you know on a kind of bigger scale. Yeah, I think that particular thing could go uh, both ways. That it doesn't just have to be locals that are uh, calling in and complaining about alcohol abuse types of things, which I think was the original proposal for the hotline. I think that students could also come in and, and call about their types of issues and I appreciate the connection with SafeWatch because they could in a way take that model and create, it doesn't have to be a website, it could still be a hotline and uh, promote it in the same way that SafeWatch's approach to deal with campus climate issues and use the same thing to deal with town gown types of issues in Blacksburg. Any other questions? If I stand still for too long I'll start <laughs> dancing and it's very bad. <laughs> Yep. As a town council member, how would you support um, sustainability and renew renewable energy in the town? Okay, that's a great question. It's one I think that all of the candidates will be answering in one form or another at tomorrow's Sustainable Blacksburg panel discussion at 7 p.m. and the Graduate Life Center. But uh, the most obvious way to support creating a more sustainable Blacksburg is through zoning regulations and other types of ordinances and town policies which support what I described earlier as being smart growth. But that's not really the only way that we can create, make Blacksburg more sustainable. We need to make good on our promise that we did under the Cool Cities and the Mayor's Climate Protection Agreements to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And I know organizations like Sustainable Blacksburg are first looking at ways how we can determine what our current carbon footprint is so that we can then tell how much we need to reduce it and what direction we need to go in that area. I think that 
We can increase public support for locally grown food.